Hello and welcome to another Ask Me Mondays. It's today it's a bit more chilly, but I really yeah enjoy it because it's the air is just so fresh and I love wearing a hoodie and uh, I always always check the weather forecast for Berlin where I live and it's so hot there around 30 degrees all the time and it's just way too hot for me and in our apartment it just gets hot and I'm not so productive and here when it's a bit more chilly I really love this weather anyways <laughs> let's put 20 minutes on the timer and let's dive right into your question shall we <laughs> let's go first question you always say like now we will uh, now we will only work on our project but what is your project then so i often say now we work on our project hey we've worked on our project it is just you know stuff that excites us we follow what excites us we follow our highest excitement and that manifests into our projects like i just call it projects because i don't know how else to say it i i worked on my excitement just sounds a bit strange so my projects what they are actually it's a lot of things like instagram vegan strengths every day i research a lot then i um design a new infographic for vegan strengths then vegan food i make a recipe video i photograph my food and write the captions i interact on instagram direct messages i check my emails every day i get offers i check them and i read every day and i read articles and i have some sites where i'm subscribed to and when new studies come out i, I check them out i read them I edit videos like after I record this I edit this video and then I prep it and the thumbnail and everything and that is my project you know bringing out the Ask Me Mondays today and um, then other videos I've planned and um, my ebook overworking my ebook then constantly working on my website then there is a bug and I fix it and I get so many me messages and then work on them and um, just improve my website and then also our merch thinking about new designs manifesting new designs designing them together with Scorpio mind and then building the site I do it all myself and then it's a lot of work and it never stops and I love it and that's just my excitement all this in, in to this direction and I just call it projects because it's what it is if you have a better name for it then let me know but yeah I think you know and if I just say oh I worked it sounds like something, you know, work is often associated with something negative, but project, you know, I like the word, it's like a project, something I'm excited about and it is, I follow what excites me, so now you know, if you have a better phrase, then let me know down below. <clears throat> Question for Ask Me Mondays. What do you think about Anthony Williams, medical medium? Have a nice trip. I don't know what to think about him because I don't know him. I didn't look into his stuff, but if I get this question more often, then I will so. Hey man, I just watched your YouTube Ask Me Mondays. What do you study in university again and what year are you in? Also, how do you balance full time social media, university, etc.? Um, I often say it, said it, I study horticulture at the Humboldt University. And I also study to become, to become a vegan nutritionist. I do it online. And how do I balance social media and studying? So, um, I, you know, I'm not focused that I get the best grades in university. I, I just want to make it through because what is more important to me is my social media and no one will look into my resume and, oh, you have a, uh, you know, you, you just passed and that is all what matters. So I put as little time in studying horticulture as possible and to become a vegan nutritionist it's easy for me because I know mostly already, you know, I read the scripts, I'm like yeah, 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 oh that is interesting, I make a post about that, yeah, 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 go to the test, get and pass every time all the tests, I have, to, you know, 100%, I got everything correct and because I know so much in advance because, you know, vegan strengths, I accumulate quite a lot of knowledge and that so it takes basically not much time for me but it's time that I invest anyways because that's that's what I do all day researching 
to produce new content for vegan strength to get more knowledgeable to share it with you because if I wouldn't learn new stuff all the time then I would get to a point where I basically shared everything and I would want never to come to this point so I'm always have this great balance between input and output and um, so yeah then it's quite quite easy for me to balance so I take every day time to read the scripts for my vegan nutritionist and uh, and as I said it, you know it I also use that knowledge to make posts so it's it's kind of the same so if I would I spend time on nutritionfacts.org and reading the scripts for my vegan nutrition it's kind of the same but it's both you know and I use that knowledge for social media so it, it works really well for me because it's in alignment with what I do on social media if I would study something completely different than I would do on social media here I promote a plant-based diet and if I would study to become an engineer then it would be difficult because okay now I focus on plant based and then something completely else where I know little about it so I need to study a lot but because I know already a lot of the field I'm studying in and you know I'm even more passionate because I can use this knowledge for social media so the research work is the same yeah you understand so so that's why it's quite easy and that's why I recommend study something that excites you and if you're into social media not only consuming it but also producing it then you know you, you do social media I, I hope so what excites you so also study what excites you because then it works hand in hand who that was a long answer <laughs> any tips for binge eating or eating past your appetite so I've never been a binge eater so I can talk about experience of course I've overeaten once in a while like everyone has and because I've done it, I don't binge, I don't overeat because it just feels bad. I've o overeaten in the past so badly that it just, I couldn't sleep, the food came back into my esophagus and oh, it felt horrible. So that's why I don't overeat so badly anymore because I know how it feels. You know, it's like going to yoga, you just feel great after yoga. And maybe you don't enjoy it so much during yoga, but you just know oh, afterwards, oh, Shavasana, I feel so great. And often for me, I go to yoga because I just know how great I feel afterwards. And I don't binge because I know how badly I would feel afterwards. And this 20 minutes mouse pleasure, it's so not worth it for feeling so bad the next hours, the next day, days even. So that's why I don't overeat. And I recommend to you, don't have so much junk food and stuff you binge at home and I recommend you binge on food that is healthy because then you feel great afterward eat a whole watermelon and you're like oh, I'm so full but it's 96% water and you just need to pee so badly afterwards and you feel great because it's, it's mostly water and the, the remaining 4% is loaded with micronutrients so, so you feel great make a nice cream with ripe bananas, eat lots of bananas because all fruits and vegetables are about 85 to 95 percent water. So they're mostly water so you cannot overeat on them and the result is just you feel great afterwards. You might feel full for the moment but then you pee and you feel great and the more you eat the better you feel. So eat whole foods, binge on whole foods. Just if you know yourself, if you know you can't stop after one chips, you eat the entire bag one chip, one piece of chip, I don't know, you know, but you eat the entire bag, don't have it at home. Or have only very little at home that you, you, you eat the entire package and it's only a small package and it's not a big deal, but don't have mountains of junk food you know you, you're likely to pin, binge on, just don't buy it, you know, just don't have it at home. Just fill your home with whole foods. Have lots of ripe fruits, vegetables, all that stuff at home. And you know, oh, those tomatoes, you eat lots of tomatoes, an entire cucumber, and as I said, nice cream, just a fruit blade. Binge on this stuff, make a porridge, and you feel great afterwards. So no chunk at home, or only little chunk at home that it's not a big deal if you would eat it all. And that's my recommendation. As I said, the whole foods, the more you binge on it, the healthier you get. And yeah, that's, but as I said, I never had experience with binge eaters, so I can't really talk of my experience, so I hope that helped. 
the importance of water. Mm, water is essential. <clears throat> we could last without food for weeks, but we only last without water for days. It's so essential. We are 65 to 75% water. When we're an infant, I think we're around 75% water and the older we get, we only get around 60% water. But still, we're mostly water. It's so essential and we should stay hydrated all the time and not only drinking lots of water, that is really important, but also eating water-rich foods like fruits and vegetables. They just keep us hydrated all the time. And water even, I recently watched a documentary, it's a while ago, but where they showed that water has a consciousness. So uh, unfortunately there isn't so much research what we have on water yet, but I think there is some point to it. For example, in the documentary, they put water molecules under a microscope and they played heavy metal music. And then they played classic music. And the water molecule, the structure changed with the heavy metal music. It looked, it looked deformed and ugly and just, just a mess. And the classic music, it has a, had a beautiful structure. So pretty. And you know, it's, and they, they really, it, it was a great documentary. I, I, if it's in English too, I watched it in German, but I think it's in English too. I link it down below, just watch it. Make up your own mind. But I, I, I think there's something to it, for sure that how energetic the water is, like if we, here in Austria, you know, when it can flow and in, 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 in this shape and not like in pipes like this and um, watch it. I might do some, some posts about, wa about water, but um, yeah, unfortunately, I, I wish there would be more studies about that. Um, but yeah, stay hydrated and try to get the freshest and the cleanest water and yeah. Question for Ask Me Mondays. What podcasts and ebooks do you recommend? So for ebooks, I always recommend my ebooks because I know they're great and I know it's easy English, it's easy to understand. So check out, link is down below, vegans.org, my vegan nutrition guide for nutrition and my vegans training guide for training. And if you're into something else, then let me know for what you want an ebook for. But yeah, I, I love ebooks. I, I cons that's why I wrote ebooks because you can just download them and read them on your phone, on your MacBook, just everywhere. And um, they're mostly cheaper than books, and um, you can just download them immediately. And um, yeah, that's 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 why I produced ebooks myself as well. And uh, what other ebooks? Yeah, you should have written a topic what you're interested in. I assume a plant-based diet and the number one book is How Not to Die by Dr. Michael Kreger. And I also really recommend the, the audio book because it's just easy to listen to. And what podcasts? I did, my last video was uh, the YouTubers I watch. And I asked you, should I do should I do a video, the podcast I listen to? And most of you said, yes, yes, do it. So stay tuned in the next couple of days, I will record a video with, the, with my favorite podcasts. And I linked then all my favorite podcast episodes down below. So stay tuned for that. Um, but you can listen for, for now on to my podcast, the Vegans podcast. It's a great podcast. Yesterday I brought out a new episode. I talked an uh, Instagram Q&A, like what you stuff to know. And I talked a lot about sweeteners, what is the healthiest sweetener. And um, would I hang out with meat eaters? I just get funny and cool and interesting questions and I answered a bunch. So check it out. And I also have great guests like Dr. Michael Kreger, John Venus, Derek from Simnet Nutrition. My next guest will be Conscious Muscle. Misha Janjets, a vegan pro natural bodybuilder. Um, uh, what's his name? James Espy, next week. He's, yeah, so, so check it out, Vegan Podcast. I'm so passionate about it. And um, podcasts are just so great. You know, I, I interview such inspiring people all around the world and this conversation we have, it's not only between us, but we share it with the world and you can learn from both of us and I learned so much through it and it's just such a great feeling and I get your feedback and what a crazy, great world we live in where podcasts and internet exist and we can use it in a way that serves us. I love it. 
<clears throat> so, next question. I recently subscribed to your videos. I love your content. Keep it up. Question for the next Ask Me Mondays. Do you can also answer it in, you can also answer it in the comments. Do you suffer from acid reflux when you eat too much legumes? I'm struggling with that a little bit and I don't want to reduce eating legumes because I still want to make gains. So I don't suffer from that and I never heard of anything that legumes would cause that. So that is strange. Is it only legumes that cause it or because maybe you've overeaten or just eat too many legumes or you know maybe only one legume try all of them and I'm sure it's not the legumes you know just maybe eat fewer legumes um, but I wouldn't skip legumes give them another, another chance and if you find out oh it's only kidney beans you know then you eat other beans eat peas eat chickpeas eat lentils eat soybeans eat tofu there's so many great legumes and I would eat them because they're so healthy but let me assure you, don't you worry. You don't have to eat legumes. I would encourage you because they're super healthy, but you can be super healthy. You would miss nothing and you can build muscles without legumes whatsoever. Just eat a variety of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts and seeds. And instead of legumes, eat more whole grains. And whole grains have such a huge variety. As I made my post yesterday at Vegan Strengths about corn, but there's so many legumes and so many whole grains. And I will make more posts at Vegan Strengths about whole grains because there's just so great ones you probably don't even know. Like bulgur, I discovered recently, I will do a post about it soon. And I love it because first of all, it's so easy to make. You just take hot water. It's like couscous, you can take, make it with hot water and it's done. And it's a really healthy whole grain. I, I always thought like bulgur is not a whole grain, but I looked into it recently and it's a whole grain and a really healthy whole grain. It has like, it has the highest amount of fiber, more, more fiber than quinoa, than buckwheat, than millet, than rice. It's, yeah, so, so many whole grains. Don't, you know, stay in your box, oh, I only know rice and quinoa. No, there are so many. Go out, explore. I link your website down below. It's called, um, I don't know, you will see it, the Whole Grain Council or something. And there you find a list of many whole grains and why they are so healthy. And just be open-minded and next time you go grocery shopping, try a new whole grain. Vegans, I take DHA supplement, algae, and I feel more active. What do you think about take vegan DHA? It It's a supplement that totally makes sense after... B12 and vitamin D. The next one that makes the most sense is uh, vegan DHA and EPA, so vegan omega-3. You don't need it if you don't, if you have a good ratio of omega-3 to omega-6. And most people unfortunately don't. They eat way too much omega-6. So I would recommend cut down on your omega-6 intake and eat enough omega-3s every day. That means eat at least one to two or eat one to two tablespoons of flax seeds every day crown flax seed for better absorption and then you got your omega-3 covered also another great source is um, chia seeds hemp seeds and walnuts great omega-3 sources but the king with a ratio of four to one four times omega-3 then omega-6 flax seeds one tablespoon every day until you die and then, then your omega-3 is covered. That's it. But if you eat mountains of omega-6, what many people unfortunately do, then they have a ratio of 15 to 1, 20 to 1, 20 the, amounts of, 20 the amount of omega-6 and omega-3. And then it's not a healthy ratio and it leads to more inflammation, aging and stuff you don't want to happen in your body. So cut down on your omega-6 and then you don't need algae oil. But, and, and where is it in? A lot of animal products, so cut out the animal products. A lot of vegetable oils, so cut out the vegetable oils as much as you can or limit them. Um, in sesame, don't, you know, sesame is super healthy, but don't eat mountains of tahini and sesame. Don't eat mountains of nuts. Eat a handful of nuts, but not too many nuts because nuts are also quite high in omega-6. Um, and yeah, so, some other, other stuff. If you, if you just eat a handful of nuts, if you just eat one tablespoon of tahini and then and, and cut out the vegetable oils and animal products, your ratio will be quite good and you don't need DHA 
from algae oil. If you don't know, so quick remi- quick, quick summarize. DHA and EPA, it's omega-3. There are only two essential, I mean, uh, there are two essential fatty acids, omega-3 and omega-6. Many people think like, oh, uh, we need to eat fish for omega-3. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's the worst. You get your omega-3, yes, but you get so many pollutants in fish, cholesterol, saturated fats, all the stuff that is really harmful for you. So don't stay away from fish. Where does the fish get the omega-3 from? It's not like fish can synthesize omega-3 by themselves. No, they're like humans. We, not, we cannot synthesize omega-3 by ourselves. We eat flax seeds, for example, then we have it. And if you would eat my flesh, guess what? You get some omega-3. Would I recommend eating myself? No. But where do fish get the omega-3 from? From algae. They sw- swim around, they eat algae, and that's where they get the omega-3 from. That's the source. So we cut out the middleman, the fish, and go directly to the source, to the algae oil. But wait a minute, aren't they polluted too? No, because the algae oil, the algae, which are produced for a supplement, for a vegan supplement, are grown not in the ocean, are grown in, in tanks outside of the ocean. So they are not polluted at all. And they are the best cruelty-free source for omega-3. And you know, it's why is it the oil? Because it's in the fat, because it, omega-3, it's a fatty acid. And uh, that's why then it's much more concentrated. And you know, I, I say, oh, stay away from oils, but it's only a bit of oil. And then it serves the purpose for covering your omega-3 and you only need a bit and you're covered. So if you have a bad ratio or if you just want to boost your omega-3, then I would recommend taking it. But if you cut down like I do on omega-6 and have a quite good ratio, then you don't need it. I consider it getting it in the future. I will do a blood test soon. Maybe I can test it again. I tested my ratio already and it was good. And you know, when I track on chronometer, you see how much I got in a day. And I always had a ratio of like, one to three, one to four, never more than one to five. And that is what all the World Health Organization recommend. Get a ratio, one to five or lower somewhere there. And I'm always in this corridor, in this ratio. And that's why I don't worry about it. That's why I don't consider it supplementing now. But it is something that I consider and it makes sense. And if you want to supplement, stay away from fish. Stay away from fish oil. If you want to know why in more details, why fish oil is so harmful up here, get the polluted free, cruelty free source, algae oil, that is the source, the algae, that's where the fish get it from. This middleman, this long recycling process, getting then the fish and then the fish oil, makes no sense and you get all the mercury, DDT, BBT, whatever it's called, all the pollutant, all the heavy metals, stay away from that and not to mention the poor little fishy, so go directly to the source and just eat your flax seeds, just eat your flax seeds cut down on omega-6 like animal products, vegetable oils, then you're already all good and don't need to worry about it. If you don't eat flax seeds yet, please do so. They're so healthy and you don't need much, just one tablespoon per day, that's it. Put it in your porridge, put it in your smoothie. It it, it tastes nutty, it's an enjoyable flavor and it's it's incredible how much omega-3 is in there and not only omega-3, they're really healthy. rich in fiber, micronutrients, so get your flex. That is the takeaway of this Ask Me Mondays. I'm so looking forward for your new questions down below and I see you next Monday. Thanks for watching. Peace out.